nobody's building real businesses anymore. You know that. All of Silicon Valley in New York, to your point, nobody's building actual businesses. Yeah, I think it's crazy that these people raise money for some of these D2C brands. It's crazy. It's because they can. There's so much money in the system. Yeah. There's too much money in the system. And they don't realize they'll get way richer by not doing that. They just, they, they like the perception of success versus actual success. Because it's actually incredibly cheap to do this. The perception. It also, brother, I'll tell you this though. It's time we talk about entrepreneurship and talent. You and I got lucky in the fucking DNA game. It is not so easy. Like, to, it, I understand what you're saying and I say it too, let's flip it around. It's actually super hard to build a sustainable business where you're not being fucking trust funded. All these startups are trust funds. When I always tell people, I'm like, intellectually, it's not that hard. Emotionally, it's it's super challenging. And a lot Life. of people, and, and they can't just balance. You get, Good I'm news, like, nothing's complicated intellectually. This is all emotion. People, right. people don't have the stomach for losing and judgment. Yeah, I mean, starting these DSC brands, like I know a bunch of people doing it. I'm like, this is really not that You'll hard. Appreciate you gotta this. be able to, you gotta what's, be able to stay ready? balanced. What's more fun for 99% of the people listening and the world right now? Hey, go raise money and look like you're killing it and have CEO in your Instagram title and have money to go spend because you're paying yourself enough and all this stuff or eat dog shit for four and a half years to build a foundation to maybe get to that same exact place but you're on stable ground and then you can start the process and maybe in eight years it can look good. The end. Who the fuck is gonna pick eight years over eight minutes? One percent, which is why that one percent's about to win big. Like what I think makes me successful in these talks is I never impose my will or opinion on what will happen. Sure. All my friends that are like, "Fuck, how did you? I got TikTok wrong." It's like, and whether TikTok disappears tomorrow or not, there's incredible money being made in the TikTok infrastructure, and that's what we're talking about business in this narrow way. And I'm, they're like, "Why are you always right?" I'm like, "Because I don't impose my opinion." I, you're because I'm talking to these inner circle friends. I'm like, "You said it was stupid for you." You said that because you're insecure. You have 800,000 followers on Instagram and you don't want to start over. You're doing what Tila Tequila and Dane Cook did with MySpace. You're doing what all my homies on Twitter did about Instagram. You now are doing that to Instagram. You're so set in your thing and you've got clout. You don't want the world to reset. I only want the world to reset because I don't actually value my clout. I value learnings and impact. It's a huge deal. Well, so psychedelics, real quick to finish this off and then jump in with your for your helps. Psychedelic stigma is gonna go away, which is then gonna make people feel comfortable to do it. And I have a very deep intuitive feeling that it is the medicine, or whatever the fuck you wanna call it, that's gonna help a fuckload of people who have not been able to find their alternative in Advil or in therapy or in much harder core medicine. And that excites the shit out of me. I want way more happiness in the world. Anything that's sold in a store, just is target, just walk around target. Anything. Yeah. And that then tells every entrepreneur, because I know a lot are listening right now, sell what you love. Like if you love blueberry jam, fucking make that brand. Back to you saying it's easy, it has never been easier to be like, I love peanut butter and jelly, for real. For real, I love it. It's never been easier on earth. And I mean the delta is like a billion to zero on starting a peanut butter and jelly brand if you take a 10 year window. If you take a 10 year window, let me tell you real life instead of this VC shit. And I know we're late, but fuck it, I'm pumped right now. If you sell dumb shit in your house, I don't have money, Gary, good. You have stuff in your house. You're like most Americans have stuff. Even like people that aren't making a lot of money have fucking stuff. At least a thousand dollars of crap. Yes. And if you don't, I'll teach you and I keep teaching people, I'll teach you how to take 30 bucks and turn it into a thousand. I fucking did in Trash Talk episode three. It was called $20 of Olympic pins for over a thousand. Real life, real talk. Do you have the humility to go garage sailing? That's the question. Do you have humility to go to the dollar store and walk out and while everybody is at that Whole Foods and sees you walking out with bags from the dollar store? People don't like judgment. Do you have the humility when you don't have a car to go pick up something on Craigslist and take the fucking bus and sit with a lamp on your lap. Like, well, why so, wouldn't you want to do that? That sounds fun. Because it's easier for people mentally to complain and blame than to take on accountability. Accountable as fuck, tell them I want it this afternoon, Alex. So nonetheless, if you can get 20,000 bucks by eating shit for a year and grinding, then you can then take that $20,000 to develop early stage peanut butter and jelly brand, early stage Instagram and TikTok ads, and early stage, early stage, early stage, AKA 10 years. But in 10 years, if you're 32, could you imagine being able to quit 
your job at 42 that you fucking hate and are dying inside and do a business around your singular thing, your singular thing. I'm talking, everybody needs to hear this. This is Crush It 2008. I was right, it's real. Like, people are still not doing it. Fuck where you see the opportunity because you read the hustle and trends and you're like, fuck, there's not, that's great. And by the way, you might be like me. By the way, me? I'm a business nerd. I can get fired up about anything. Yeah, we just like to nerd out on that stuff. But if you're fucking hardcore, toothpaste like you like like it you like buy different brands you're intrigued by it it's vulnerable if you're like hardcore skiing like you, like and video work like go become the person that fucking does content on ski mountains it's real it's fucking real but you have to think of it in 10 years because anybody who thinks it's real thinks you have to raise money everybody thinks you have to raise money now it's fucking broke, bro. It's never been cheaper. Maybe if you live in San Francisco, but I always tell people, I go, go to, move to so New don't, Mexico. So don't live in fucking San Francisco. Go then. to New Mexico. Yeah. Go to Missouri. That's right, bro. <laughs> no, for real. I mean, bro, every single one of my friends made fun of me for starting VaynerMedia. It's a client service business. They didn't, real, they didn't, and I, to your point, back to like why I would never judge somebody that wants to do a hundo in 2025, you know how you navigate by being a runner, that gives me a lot of insight. Actually gives me a lot of insight on me. I never compete with myself. I don't run or whatever. Though I was pumped, I did break my jumping, uh, my jump rope record uh, this Saturday, Sunday with Mike on how many I can do in 12 minutes. But nonetheless, I would tell you that non-sexy businesses right now that have true business fundamentals are by far the most interesting. What else is interesting then? Sports cards. I'm sorry to bring it up again. All my friends are like, this is stupid. It's all gonna go tech. I'm like, cool. I really don't think so. Like physical things are not going away from our society. So then what, where are the opportunities through uh, exchange uh, marketplaces? Yeah, somebody's gonna build a true, you know, there's something called ComC, there's a company running around right now raising capital, that's a true Merkle exchange type thing where you never take any of the cards, you short, you, you, you buy futures. Yes, I also think sports like music is a fundamental pillar, like I love history. The Romans, biggest events were people fucking fighting each other, like boxing and fighting a lion and whatever the fuck, but like this is never going away. And I think that if you look at culture, look at, look at all of us right now. There's a lot of young professionals in this room. I'm gonna call myself young. The way we're dressed, like every person here doing the same thing we're doing right now in 1974 looks totally different. The casual nature, the culture nature. And I think art is f- not this generation's favorite thing. Though there's cool art and there's a lot of fun things and I'm actually in an art business I like a lot called Iconic, but yeah, I- Yeah, the, the posters. Uh-huh. I'm a very big fan that because of sneaker culture and because of urban culture, that I think that sports cards are about to become the next art. And so like a lot of what I'm buying, whether it's Colin Kaepernick, which is cultural, not what he can do on the field because he's probably not gonna be on the field again, or or basketball, soccer, wrestling cards, like I think they're the next art.